Ladies and gentlemen, let's shift our focus now to the other big story we are tracking. Every year, a non-profit organization called Pratham releases a survey on how rural education is doing. Let's start with the good news. 89% children between the age of 14 to 18 are enrolled in educational institutions, schools, colleges. Here is something interesting. 90% of them are on social media. Now let's get to the not such good news. Most kids in rural India between the age group of 14 to 18 cannot do basic class 3 math. 14 to 18 and they can't do basic class 3 math. 43% cannot read English sentences. 25% cannot read standard two-level texts in their own mother tongue, in their own language. But when it comes to technology, they are clocking in higher levels of mastery. 89% of them have smartphones. 90% have used social media. And 66% of them can set an alarm. 90% of the rural kids surveyed between the age group of 14 to 18 have smartphones at home. And more boys own a smartphone compared to girls. Child labor still exists. That is what the report is illustrating. 33.7% kids worked for more than 15 days in the month of December. Those who don't attend school or college, well, 55% of them don't do it because they are working. What is the report telling us? I'm putting that question to my guests who are joining me this evening. Thank you very much. Praneet Mongali, you're a trustee at the Sanskriti Group of Schools. Thank you very much. Vinesh Menon, CEO at Ampersand Group. Thank you very much. Uh, Vinesh, what is, what is this report telling you? To me, I mean, I'm looking at the report, and of course, it's a 22-page it's a report, and there are many more pointers to it. But what it is telling me is uh, that when kids are going to school, there are learning gaps, which is very obvious, but they seem to be picking up technology very quickly. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> sorry, thank you. Yes, I, I, I agree. I think, you know, whenever these reports come, it's pretty easy to keep focusing on the glass, glass which is half mm -hmm. empty or other three-fourth empty. I think we need to also look at some of the mm -hmm. good things that have started to happen. And I think uh, you already mentioned quite a few data points. Uh, I think one important data point is the attrition level that used to normally happen between eight to nine standard has gone down considerably. 89% of students in eighth have started going into the ninth, which mm. is pretty good news. Uh, we need to, you know, kind of be happy about that. Mm. And like you rightly said, uh, the, the uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the whole digital native uh, fund ask stepping in, it's 92% uh, on smartphones. These are all good things. Uh, the report also talks about some of the not so good things like you rightly mentioned. And you mentioned a very important point. Uh, children of 14 to 18 cannot do some basic uh, level of, uh, you know, math and 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 uh, basic re reading. And the answer to that is very simple. It's now proven that most of the education that comes in with age has to be set in the early years. the The period of six months to seven years is when the child grasps the maximum, and early years needs to be given a lot of importance and attention. Clearly, the 14 and 18 year old children of today should have been given that when they were, uh, let's say, uh, uh, six months old and one year old and two years, that's nearly 14 years back or 12 years back, which probably is missing. And I think that has started seeping in today. So I, I suspect that 14 years hence, the child of today, who is a child than what we've seen, uh, uh, you know, like you rightly said, children have started getting adapting. They've started adapting to uh, technology, owning smartphones. But uh, I think somewhere they need to figure out a way to try and reach the last mile through doing some more work in this area. Uh, subsidies for smartphones, which are being used only for for, for learning, that could be a that could be a start. Uh, working on bandwidth a little a little more to reach mm. the last mile, that could be a start. Uh, you know, a little bit of work on the uh, budgets that the education that the government can uh, deploy towards education. Now, these are all areas that need to be kind of, mm. you know, deepened for us to go the whole mile and to start getting into an area where, okay. let's say, 70 and 80 percent of the students start uh, uh, 
you know, let's call it not 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 showing the kind of reports that you've you, you've said today. There's a lot of these data points, of course. I could go deeper, okay. uh, but these are some of the fundamentals that I would pick up. But okay. So, Praneet, uh, uh, the true problem areas then are reading and comprehension, reading especially English and its comprehension and math. The report is also finding out that when it comes to money calculations, the boys seem to be better at it than girls. Uh, you know, I, I'm just wondering if what the report is telling us about how children in rural area between the age of 14 and 18 are adapting to technology, the fact that they are 90% of them are on social media, the fact that 90% rural uh, uh, rural homes have a cell phone. I'm just thinking to myself, these kids obviously are smart enough. They're not dumb kids, they're smart kids. If, if, if they're adapting to technology very quickly without anyone teaching them, them getting to social media, etc. Now, if they're smart enough to adapt to technology, why are they not smart enough to do basic math, which is class 3 math for a 14-year-old or a 15-year-old or a 16-year-old? The problem clearly is then not with the kid, it's with the way we teach kids. That's a, that's a pertinent point, uh, Shreya. And like Vinesh pointed out earlier, the roots of this are in uh, a couple of factors. Firstly, most of these children are coming from households where they're first-generation learners, especially because the focus of this survey is in the rural areas. So they do not have the advantage of parents who have had access to a great formal education. So in that sense, they're hamstrung by the fact that they don't have an advantage of A, starting school early, and even when they're starting, the environment at home isn't necessarily prioritizing it. And even though the focus of the study is from 14 to 18-year-olds, there is a big gap of, uh, because in India, compulsory education is only till age 14. So from age 14 to age 18 onwards, the enrollment ratio drops. That's And that's a worrying sign. And there are gender differences there as well. So many of these students... Uh, a, they haven't had access to a strong foundational program from their early age. That's a problem. They're first-generation learners. Where their needs are very different, you know, that needs to be mapped very accurately. That's a challenge. Coming to the point of technology, uh, which you made, uh, Shreya, the, the power of technology and how simple it's been made is that it's very easy to adapt it, especially when it's for recreational use and entertainment use and powerful algorithms of social media, uh, companies else, etc., make it very simple and easy to use where you can spend a lot of time and get very little in terms of educational content out of it. So a lot of the technology and COVID didn't really help where the kind of disruption that COVID caused of online learning and, you know, children, even though they had access to smartphones at that time, they had to be shared. So the two years of the loss of learning during COVID, were, you know, gave a blow to children who weren't starting from a very strong base to start off with. And uh, hmm. technology, if it's used correctly, if it's used in, in, in a manner where educationists are using it to accentuate the learning, it can be a great tool. It can also be a very big distraction if you're just given children, you know, who have access to smartphones and parents don't know what they're up to. Hmm. Uh, but here's, here's the point, uh, Praneet, and I yeah. wonder if, uh, you know, Vinesh also wants to come to this. But anyhow, uh, yeah, go ahead. I, I had another quick point I wanted to make. I understand if, uh, you know, kids in rural India are not picking up English very well, that 37% of them uh, uh, will not comprehend an English sentence. That's fine. It's not even important, many people can say. But if you're not in a position, if 25% are not, not even comprehending or in a position to write or read in their own mother tongue, uh, that's worrying. Well, who's the director? Virish, would you want to come? Yes, yeah, yeah, it is, it, uh, is yeah. Worrying. Uh. it is worrying, but I think relatively, if you look at comparing to what it used to be earlier, it is improving. So I think it's been a pretty slow mm. start, but I Actually, do believe yeah, that 2%. the pace of change has started mm. to improve. So that is, you know, we need to take cognizance mm. of that. The second part of what I just wanted to extend to what uh, Praneet had mentioned is the, also the way we teach has gone mm. through a significant change. The whole pedagogical uh, change in terms of, you know, bringing in a much more ex experiential kind of a learning, getting the whole teaching to be much more exciting to the children, uh, rather than just pure rote learning. This has found its way into the urban and tier one, tier two kind of cities and private schools. 
but there's a lo- big big gap in taking this into the into the government schools now the fact is that these children are still next gen ch- children it doesn't matter whether they are in government schools or private schools or rural or urban these are next gen children and these children are starting mm-hmm. to get exposed to a big big wide world of uh, uh, the the internet out there and social media out there and therefore the way they see uh, uh, their surroundings is very different from the way the children of yester years used to see and therefore we need to adapt our teaching also accordingly so are the government teachers getting enough training towards doing this are they even realizing that there is a massive change in the way they need to bring uh, their entire teaching methodology uh, do they have the right kind of uh, digital equipments inside the classroom these are probably areas that we need to worry about mm-hmm. having said that i think that 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 whole shift in terms of what you just mentioned the 25% i think over years will keep coming down because the very mm-hmm. fact that you you're now exposed uh this also going to make you start doing a lot of self learning i am given to understand in the same report that nearly 60% mm. of the children are involved in some kind of educational activity uh you know you know at any point of time and this is very very encouraging uh, which which also means mm. that they are trying to learn on their own and and that i think should take care of that uh, issue that you had just mentioned about pradeep you know before we end i have some exposure to uh, village education because you know all of us come from villages you go back there you see how schools work there my experience is a the teachers will not show up if they show up there are way too many kids uh, so you'll have a older older student teaching the younger ones and the older ones can do exactly what they want to I- i'm sure this is not a template for 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 all places but i'm thinking if if this is how it works in my my village probably this is how it works in many many villages cheating is rampant cheating is rampant everyone will pass because they know they can cheat because the teachers will encourage them to cheat uh, any views on how disconnected maybe governments are to the way uh, students in rural india are taught again who's the director I to i think the nub the nub of the problem there uh pranit uh uh is that in any kind of a structure where you are uncoupling that, hmm, hmm. accountability from the actual results over hmm. there there is an inherent problem over there where hmm. in a private setting hmm. if you would think about it if there were students in a school who would consistently underperform there is no way that the principal of the school or the teacher of the school wouldn't have some accountability either from the parents or you know people mm-hmm. simply wouldn't go to that kind of a school so a system where a formal structure of almost a, re- a report card for how the school teachers and how the principals are performing that needs to get more robust but there are some bright spots and there are bits of good news there sure because in some states they are bringing this forth they they are bringing you know they're using technology to bring forth more accountability taking um, balance score cards about the children's performance tying that up with you know how how they decide to handle promotions for people else etc it's more difficult to do that in a structure where people know they have absolute job safety and security right finally at the end of the day if you know that is not in peril it's difficult to put in accountability but change is slowly but surely happening and given the fact that it's coming back from a legacy of a lot of sloth lots of inertia it is bound to take time mm. and another piece of good news you don't know, to take away from the report is that approximately uh the number of children in every age group are approximately 25 million and now we have about 22 million children mm. in um, <clears throat> who are formally enrolled in the schools as opposed to 11 million in the year 2006 so while the quality of education can definitely be better mm. the access is definitely more broad based and is reaching a more grassroots level mm. Okay we leave it there for the moment Pradeep thank you very much for joining us Vinesh thank you very much for joining us uh, some good uh, some bad lots of good as well on that uh, on that report as well uh, thank you very much gentlemen for joining us i'm i'm leaving it there a quick break on the show there's much more coming up on the other side we'll tell you what's happening in chandigarh and in delhi as far as the aam aadmi party and the bjp is concerned do stay with us